by artists. So we are going to be learning about a new artist today. Her name is Jen Arani. She is a contemporary artist, which means she is still alive and still working today. Um, Jen Arani works as an artist, an illustrator, and a graphic designer. So we can see Jen Arani over here, and we can see a little sneak peek about um, what some of her artwork looks like. You can see she's got a little variety of shapes that she uses here. This one's in a triangle shape. This one's a circle. This one even looks like a little jar, like a mason jar, like a landscape that fits right inside of it. So let's take a closer look. I want you to think for a moment about what elements of art you're seeing in each of these artworks. Right, so the first one that you might have thought of is color. So we're definitely seeing some beautiful blended colors here. Where are we seeing the color? Yeah, Jenna Ronnie mostly concentrates her colors up in the sky on all of her artwork. Um, she usually ma makes landscapes. Usually they have mountains in them. And usually the color is only up in the sky. And then down on the ground, she just has black and white. Um, so it makes the sky really beautiful, really pop out. What else do we notice about the colors she's using? Well, they blend really well together. Um, the reason they blend so well together is actually because the colors she paints that sit right next to each other sit next to each other on the color wheel as well. So let me grab my color wheel over here. Kind of pulled it back here. So we see in this first one over here, this painting, we see blue and purple and red. We see the same color scheme over here. Where is blue on this color wheel? So it's all the way over here, right? So where is purple and red? Well, purple and red are right in line with blue. The only colors that sit in between them are these tertiary colors, blue, violet, which is blue and purple mixed together. So we're seeing some of that here in this artwork as well. Um, and then red, violet over here. So these colors all sit next to each other on the color wheel, so they blend together very nicely. Um, if she were to put blue and then put orange right next to it and try to blend those together, what color do you think she would get since they're across from each other on the color wheel? Blue and orange mixed together since they're across from each other on the color wheel would actually give us brown. So we probably wouldn't want that color to be in our beautiful sky. We don't usually see brown in the sky, right? And then down here at this artwork, we're seeing blues and greens, and then it even goes into yellow. So if we take a look at our color wheel, again, we've got blue, and then she's just going in this direction up to yellow. So blue, green, and yellow. We were talking earlier, too, about warm and cool colors. So warm colors would be colors that remind you of fire or the sun. So that would be red, red, orange, orange yellow, orange, and yellow. So these are going to be our warm colors and then red, violet as well. And then our cool colors are colors that maybe would remind you of the ocean. So the ocean will be purple, blue, and green, okay? Sometimes we'll get um, yellow kind of mixed into the cool colors as well, like we see here in this artwork. But generally speaking, um, yellow would be considered a warm color. Other than color, what other elements of art are we seeing here? Okay, maybe you said shapes. We are seeing shapes. We see some triangles down here, maybe for the mountains, um, maybe some other odd shapes in there. We're also seeing circles up here in the sky with the stars, or maybe it's snow, um, if it's snowing outside. And then what else do we see? What other elements of art? You maybe said line. We're definitely seeing some thick lines back here at the edge of this mountain. And that reigns true in all of these other um, artworks as well. We're also seeing lines that go along with texture and value, which give form to 
are mountains that we're seeing here. So she's using lines to add texture to the sides of these mountains, which also gives them form and value, makes them look 3D, makes them look realistic. All right, so let's take a look at a few more of Jen Arani's artworks. So over here, you can see she's painted these on pieces of wood instead of pieces of paper. Um, and I believe she's used acrylic paints instead of watercolor or tempera cakes, okay? So that would show up a little bit better on wood. So she's using a little bit of a different material, but you can see she's still got pretty much the same outcome here. She's um, painting pretty much the same things. Over here, we've got buildings, so that's a little bit of a change for her. Um, usually we see that she does not use buildings. She usually has mountains or trees. This one even has a little tent like someone's camping. So that's something pretty interesting about this one. Over here, we're seeing one earlier. Um, we saw one that looked like it was maybe in a jar. This one looks like it's in a little bottle um, that's sealed with a cork on the top. This one even has a little house in it. Um, you can see the path leading up to the house, but she's still got those trees in the background and she's still got her cool colors in here um, with the addition of yellow. So we are going to be using either cool or warm colors. If you happen to have um, paints, that would be awesome to use for this. Um, you'll also need something black to draw with. So a crayon, a marker, um, just something that's black. Okay, I'm going to use crayons for mine. And if you do not have paints, I'm going to show you how to uh, make this work without using paints. Um, I am actually going to be using crayons for my own artwork as well. So let's hop on over and I will show you how to get started on this. Okay, so to start my Jen Arani uh, mountainscape, I have picked out some crayons. You can also use paints if you have paint. Um, but I am just going to show you how to use something that maybe you more likely will have at your house to do this project. I have some cool colors picked out here. We just talked about that when we looked at the color wheel. So these are cool colors that maybe remind us of the ocean. And then I have some warm colors here. So I'm gonna use either my cool colors or my warm colors. So you can kind of make that decision, but try to pick one or the other and kind of have that theme going. I think I'm gonna go with my cool colors. So I'm gonna set those aside for right now. I'm gonna start with a black crayon or a black marker, um, whatever it is you want to use. I'm gonna find wherever I want my mountains to start. And I'm gonna just draw a zigzag line for the tops of my mountains all the way across my paper. And I'm using a rectangular piece of paper. If you want to make this a different shape, you can absolutely do that. Um, we saw Jenarani make some that look like they fit into little jars. She makes some that are triangles. She makes some that are squares, some that are circles. So if you want to cut your piece of paper into the size or shape that you want, you can absolutely do that. I'm just going to stick with my rectangle. So um, again, like I said, I'm taking my black and then I'm going to just draw a line somewhere in the middle of my paper. It's a zigzag line and I'm going to draw the tops of my mountains. So maybe I want some of them to dip down really low. Maybe I want some of them to be kind of close together and kind of go really tall. It's all up to you how big your mountains are. So I've got this one that's going off the page. All right, so now that I have my zigzag line, I'm going to move up here to the top part. This is where the sky is. And remember, Jen Arani uses really beautiful colors. You're going to use either warm colors or cool colors. That's generally what um, Jenna Ronnie uses as well. So I'm going to use cool colors, like I said, and I'm just going to pick one to start with. So maybe I'll start with blue and you can paint this in stripes up in the sky um, or you can kind of blend them together in different areas. So maybe I'll put some blue down over here, but I'll just put a little patch of it. Again, um, you can do this with markers, you can do this with colored pencils, with crayons like I am, or if you have paints, that would be the best option. So if you have paint at your house, that would be 
an awesome tool to use for this project because that's usually what Jen or Ronnie uses. That's what our artist that we're studying uses. So I'm going to do just a patch of blue there. Maybe I'll do one over here. All right, so now I'm going to move on with some green. And then I'm going to overlap a little bit. So you could do the same thing with paints. You can overlap these colors and kind of mix them together. So when I overlap blue and green, I get a color that is called blue green. That's actually a tertiary color. So I'm going to put some green maybe over here. Now I'm going to use the rest of the paper. It's going to be purple. So I'm going to fill purple into all these other areas just for my sky. So something to note here, when I mix blue and purple together, I get a blue purple, a blue violet. Okay, that's a really pretty color. That happens because blue and purple on the color wheel sit right next to each other, okay? Now, remember we talked about analogous colors being ones that sit next to each other on the color wheel, just like blue and purple. So they make blue violet. Blue, or I'm sorry, purple and green do not sit next to each other on the color wheel. So if you blend those two colors together very much, you're gonna make kind of a brown color. So I'm gonna just do the purple next to the green, but I'm gonna try not to mix them together. All right, so I've just finished the colors in my sky. Like I said, I've blended together my blue and my green and my blue and my purple, but I have not blended together the green and the purple because I don't want to make a brown. And I knew it would make a brown because it doesn't sit next to that color on the color wheel. Purple and green do not sit next to each other on the color wheel. Okay. All right. So now you can add some snow and stars up here. If you are using paint, you can use some white paints and paint little dots up here for stars or for... Um, snow, just like we see in Jen Arani's paintings. Um, since I am not using paints, I'm actually going to use some pieces of paper and I'm just going to cut them out. So I am going to cut out little circles. So if you think you can freehand them, then you can do that. So I'm going to freehand probably a couple of them. So it's not a perfect circle, but it'll work. Every time I cut one out, I'm going to glue it on. So I'm using a glue stick, and I'm just going to put some glue on one side. I'm going to get really sticky fingers. I know you guys don't really like to get sticky fingers. I don't either. I'm going to decide where I want it to go and just plop it right down. So now I'm going to make a few more. So another option is you can grab whatever you're drawing with. You can grab a pencil or anything else. And you can just draw out some circles. Maybe you have some that are bigger, some that are smaller. And you can cut them out like that instead of freehanding them. So you can see I've added a few stars or pieces of snow. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the bottom part. We're going to add details to our uh, mountains down here. So in Jen Arani's mountains, we said we saw lots of value and texture. So... Let's find the tippy top of one of your mountains. And then you're using either a crayon or a marker, um, something that's black for this, okay? A black crayon or marker, it's gonna be harder to do if you're using paints, if you want to use paints for it. Um, so go ahead and just grab something to draw with, okay? Let's not use paints for this part. So with your black crayon or marker, whatever it is you're using, find the tippy top of one of your mountains. We're gonna add some texture or value. So I'm gonna find the tippy top and then I'm gonna come down sort of into a shape that's gonna scoop back up and hit the bottom corner of our next mountain. Okay, so I've got that one. Now let's go over to this tippy top and I'm gonna make a shape that goes down and then comes back over to this corner, the side of this mountain. Okay, so these aren't any specific shapes. I'm just making some little fun shapes. I'm going to do the same over here, but I don't really have a place to stop. So I'm just going to pick a spot over here where I'm going to stop. 
all right? And then over here, we would have one that would go to here up to the tippy top, but we don't see the tippy top, so we'll just start here and then go off the page, all right? She also had some little um, craters or little holes in her mountains as well, so you can add some of those if you want. So I'm just going to put some little shapes on just a couple of my mountains. Maybe I'll put two on this one. I'll put one maybe over here. So if you remember, the texture where we saw the value is she made a bunch of straight lines that go in the same direction inside of each of these little craters or holes and also inside of these shaded parts of the mountain. So I'm going to go and make horizontal lines through each of these little shapes that I've just drawn. So I'm just making repeating these horizontal lines. I'm going to do the same thing over in my little shapes that I made in my mountains as well. Now that we've got our 3D mountains, we're going to draw down here where the bottoms of the mountains were would be and where the snow would be. So I'm going to draw not really a straight line, but kind of a little bit of a waggly line, like a wavy line. That's the ground. And then maybe I want some hills down here. So over here, I'm going to start where I left off, and I'm actually going to kind of zigzag that line back down. And I'm not going to go all the way back over. And I'll curve back this way, and then maybe I'll do it one more time. Curve back over here, and then I'll take it off of this corner. So now I've got kind of some little bit of hilly areas. So this is the part that would be in the foreground. This part's really close to us. Here's like the middle ground, and then here is the background, of course, where our mountains are. So I'm going to add some trees in here, but from here is where you're going to take it and make it completely your own. So I might add some trees. You could add some animals down here. Just remember, if you're um, drawing things that are in the foreground, so they're near the bottom of the paper, that means they're really close to you, which means they're really big. And then things in the middle ground would be a little bit smaller because they're a little bit further away. And things all the way in the background, all the way back here, are going to be the smallest things, okay, because they're really far away from you in the background. Okay, so I've cut off a lot of that tree. I'll show you what this tree would look like if it were all the way in the background. So I'm going to start just with a little line, and then I'm going to draw little lines all the way down that line on both sides. So you can see this part right here is just this top little triangle of that tree. So this is way smaller because it's all the way back in the background. Diagonal lines that go down. So there's my middle ground tree, my background tree, and my foreground tree. So I might add some more trees in here. Um, I might add a deer or a bunny. Um, maybe you want to draw a person that's walking through here. Maybe you want to draw a cabin or a house or a vehicle, some sort of car or something that maybe is trudging around in this snow. Um, this is where you really get to make it your own. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to finish mine up. I've just finished mine. I've added a deer and some little hoof prints and then a couple of bunnies and their little bunny tracks in the snow. And I added a couple more trees as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed doing this project. Please take a picture and share it with me in the Google form if you did. And I hope you enjoyed learning about a new artist, Jen Arani, and her mountainscape paintings.